Hey, YouTube people. Wait, let me uh, fix this here. There we go. Hey there, YouTube people. Whenever I first decided to buy this guitar, you know, as I do with most instruments, I go on to YouTube and I look at videos to try to figure out if I actually want this instrument. <laughs> Is this thing going to sound like crap or not? And I found, I found that uh, there wasn't a lot of videos that were instructive about this particular instrument. And if there ever was an instrument that needs instruction, it's this one. This is a BC Rich Perfect 10. This isn't a, this isn't the uh, the pro model or anything like that. Uh, I wanted something that I felt like I could do a decent amount of weird stuff with. You know, like if I'm watching a movie to tinker around with a weird sounding instrument, which this is. <laughs> All I found were these blues guys playing through their fucking Fender amps sounding like big giant piles of poop. I don't know what it is about the guitar industry that provokes them to send all of their test instruments out and test equipment out to these blues guys who have absolutely no idea how to use anything that's related to anything except blues. They're the most niche, cliched bunch of twerps out there. Okay, no, that rant aside, uh, you know, they all sound the same. And when they play an instrument, it always sounds the same. So I'm playing through a Blackstar HT5. I love this head. This head is an awesome head. Maybe I'll make a video on how to use this head. Nothing comes out of the box and makes you metal unless you're using, like, a Line 6 or something like that, a modeling amp, which you're not going to have any room to really maneuver with. It's going to sound like every new metal band on the planet, you know, depending on what kind of guitar you're using. Okay, so first off, <clears throat> one of the more interesting features of this guitar is all the switches. <laughs> it has a whole bunch of switches. It has this switch, which affects. The coil, it, these are probably phasing switches. I actually didn't read the manual. I don't really care to. So I'm using the humbucker right now, apparently. And now you have full, uh, this, this uh, when I say humbucker, what I mean is that it's phased so that it sounds like a single coil, but it's still humbucking. Okay? So now it's series. And now you get the full range of just this pickup. Okay, so now what I generally use it, the position I generally use is with this switch up and this in the middle to get my acoustic -y. A piece of advice is when you're making a video about playing a guitar, don't look at the delayed monitor. <laughs> It'll mess you up really bad. And I'm still looking at the monitor. Like it. It's got a nice full sound. Now, <clears throat> what makes this a really good instrument for studio recording is this thing. Uh, the chicken claw switch or whatever it's called. And let me go back to just this pickup. Hot. D chord.
Now we're going to go with my normal setup. And we're going to start playing with this again. It has five positions. You also have, you know, your tone knob. As a metal guitar player, I very seldom turn the tone knob down. Some people do. That's your choice. I don't, but I'll, I'll let you hear. This is about halfway. This is all the way off. And we can play with the coil switches when we're all the way down to get, like, a more subdued sound. Let me uh, turn off the phaser. Some of you might be getting mad. I will be turning on the heavy soon. I just want you to hear the dynamics of this guitar, which is very interesting. You know, when you're playing... That song's actually copyrighted, so don't try and think you can steal it. Depending on situations, you might actually want to turn the, the thing all the way down, the, the tone all the way down when you're in uh, with, these, uh, with these two switches up. Oops, that's the wrong one. Yeah. yeah, these two switches are up now. Usually I just have the middle one up. It's a really interesting sound that this guitar gets. If you're wondering what's actually going on, how to tune it. Double E. Double B. Harmonic G's. And harmonic D's. It's a 12 string without the A and the E uh, harmonics. So you're, you're able to play with a little bit of heavy, or a lot of heavy, without getting too muddy. <clears throat> and it really does. If you ever plug a 12 string in, even a good like Jackson that's meant to play metal, you plug that in and start playing metal with full bore distortion. It's just kind of hard to really discern what's going on. And this instrument gives you the ability to play your heavier recording, you know, on your E and A strings without having that problem. So now I'm going to switch to uh I'm gonna get my hair a little frizzy.
thrash. <laughs> all over the place <clears throat> but it demonstrates and partly because i'm still watching the monitor this guitar takes a discipline to play you might not be able to see up close what's going on here but there's 10 strings on this instrument so it's a little harder to feel what you're doing uh, than it would be on a six string where there's a lot of separation between the strings so you really can feel them with it you really can't tell. It's really nice. This guitar is also pretty hard to keep in tune. guitar players when they tune up their guitar they don't really stretch out their strings properly and they get away with it because they play a little bit and then they retune and they play a little bit and they retune you will put this guitar down if you use that method because it will always be out of tune you have to kill these strings you have to break this guitar in because there's a lot of strings that depend on the guitar being in tune if it's not in tune it sounds like crap
I don't recommend playing solos on. myself as a soloist type of guitar player <clears throat> I know that it's sort of a lacking thing for me I try to play around with it but I just totally suck at it uh, maybe someday it'll click <laughs> I work on it but to put that aside this instrument is really not that good for a shredder guitar player when I mean shredder I mean you know doing sweeps and flying around solos and stuff. The guitar would need to be in exact tune, and you would need to be a very disciplined guitar player. Uh, you know, some of those guys you see do, that do lessons on, on YouTube could pull it off, but you'd need to be that good, or else you'll just get annoyed at this instrument and then grab your six string, because <laughs> it'll sound better. You have two duplicate strings down here, and if uh, if you're not pressing those strings down the same way and bending them roughly the same way, you get that wow that you don't want. The the harmonics on both strings too it's not that hard but it's hard enough the way I hit them I can hit them but pinch harmonics probably wouldn't work there very well I'd like to hear uh, the guy from Exodus play Exodus songs on this thing by the way <laughs> that would be sick well I think that you've got a pretty good idea it's an instrument for a good guitar player not an instrument for a beginner uh, it's going to give you a huge range of sounds that you can that you can uh, play around with. It'd be a great guitar to take into the studio if you have a lot of, uh, you know, non overdriven stuff. It's going to make your acoustic y stuff sound absolutely amazing. said before you have to make sure As I said before, you have to make sure that you're a, a disciplined guitar player.
this is perfect ten. If you love guitar, you will love this guitar. Now my favorite part is editing.